So, hello, <laughs> hello everyone. Uh, lovely to meet you here. Uh, I'm Mario Hellman. I'm a performance and communication skills coach. And um, currently I'm an entrepreneur. I just started my own company and it's very, very exciting. Uh, and I've done this for about 10, more than 10 years. I've worked in different communications agencies and, and done loads of different roles. And, um, and at the moment I do coaching and also I'm a podcast host. I have my own podcast called Esintimis Clinica. For those of you who speak Finnish, um, you should go and, and, and listen to it. Um, I'm going to start sharing my screen now and, and I have a little presentation and, uh, and I also have another screen here because I can really work out the, uh, you know, ins and outs of, you know, what, what you see in Zoom and so on. <laughs> so I have another screen. So it's up, up momentarily I will be looking away just to see where I'm going. So um, I'm going to start sharing now so you can see the presentation. Okay, and let's discuss. Remember to send me some, some comments on the chat function. Great. So hopefully you see um, the presentation now. I also had a, the first slide here. Um, hang on a sec. Okay. Yes, now it works. So yeah, this is me again. <laughs> I already told you this, so this is nothing new. Uh, there's me smiling in my in my current form, in this good form. But since this is actually, um, uh, this is not about uh, the portrayal of my skills and, and glorified me. Um, this is a session about authenticity. So I have to be very honest with you. Um, the situation where now it wasn't um, like this um, always. Um, I've had loads of up and downs, ups and downs in my in my career, and um, about two years ago, um, I had to literally stop because I realised I had been doing the wrong things um, for quite so many quite many years. Um, this started when I when I spent a decade in in London in um, just after graduating from high school after my A levels. And uh, I was very happy, you know, what you do in your 20s in London, you know, the best place to be on earth. Um, so I was clubbing and I, I, when I had time, I went to university. <laughs> and when I had a bit more time, I also went to work. So <laughs> I did all those crazy things and it, it was very nice. And, and so um, 10 years later, I returned to Finland and um, I was very happy. I was full of confidence and I was like, yeah, world's my oyster and I'm going to start, you know, maybe a theatre career in London, in, in Helsinki, because I had studied theatre in London. And, um, and um, yeah, so I was full of confidence at that point. Uh, and very quickly, I got a really nice job on TV. Um, and then I, I progressed to um, MTV news journalism as well. And, um, and, and I was very happy. And then something happened. Um, when I was in news journalism, I started looking around and I realized that there's so many people who have loads of really, really impressive experience. You know, they've studied um, economy and, and history and, and loads of really cool stuff. And they've, they've had so many careers already and they have, you know, all this experience. And I was like, I was really ashamed. I was, I was really ashamed of my experiences. You know, what did I know? I, I knew about clubs in London. <laughs> I, um, I knew about theatre, acting. What's that? That's not a, you know, a use, usable skill. What do you need that for? So I, for the first time in my life, probably, I started really doubting myself and my skills. And I just wasn't feeling that I wasn't good enough. You know, I, I just, uh, that's how I felt. And I even, I even started thinking that I should um, study something else. I should go back to university and do something that's credible. You know, my experience is not credible and I need to be credible. So um, with these thoughts, I, I progressed. I went to, um, I started my career in communications agencies and for a while it went really well. Um, but also after a while, the same thing started happening. I started doubting myself. Am I doing the right thing? I'm not really good enough. I haven't studied journalism or, 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 or communications and, and so on. So this just kept popping up all the time. I'm not good enough and so on. And, and still I was like, um, I have to get 
you know, I have to get recognized for something. And I wanted people to see me as a professional. And, and so I went for roles where I could have a good title. You know, she's the uh, client leader or whatever, account director. I went for these kind of things uh, without realizing that it's not actually my dream. It's not something that I really wanted to do. Um, so a couple of years ago, um, I had a bit of a bur burnout, not massive, but mild one, luckily. And, um, and then I had to stop. I had to stop and I was like, okay, what am I good at? What do I really like doing? Is there something in my story that is, is actually really something that I'm proud of? Or am I just completely just, uh, you know, should I just stop everything and start gardening? <laughs> So this is basically the conversation I had with myself. So long story short, um, that's how I realized what I should be doing. Uh, I went back to basics. Uh, what do I love doing most? Uh, what am I good at? What are my strengths? Uh, you know, we always work with our weaknesses. You know, every conversation we, we have with our bosses is usually about, so how should we, you know, make your weaknesses better? Whereas we should be concentrating on hey, you're already good at this. Why don't we make that? Why don't we make you do that even more? So that's how I, I, I came up with coaching and, uh, and started doing it. And, and I really love it. And, uh, and, I, and I realized that's something that I was supposed to be doing, combining my theater skills, my broadcasting skills, my, um, my communication skills, all in one. So this is a very long introduction, but it, it kind of... It, I had to tell you this because this is about authenticity and I can't be standing here or sitting here and telling you that I'm this perfect per person who just, you know, uh, talks to you about authenticity because that wouldn't be authentic. So that's my story. <sighs> and now we can go forward. <laughs> okay. As you probably realized from my story and probably from your story as well, uh, we have, you know, we're quite experienced people, I could see who, who's attending. Uh, we are very experienced and, and I know that many of you have had very, very strange <laughs> journeys uh, so far. And, uh, and it can be a pain in the ass <laughs> to, to find authenticity and find the things that you were meant to be doing and, and find your core. Uh, for me, certainly, it was a pain in the ass. And, um, and what often, often happens to us um, when we stop and we realize that, you know, am I living someone else's dream? Am I, is it really my dream that I'm following? Yeah, I wanted to be a boss and now I'm a boss and I don't like it. Or was it actually someone else's dream that I'm just fulfilling someone else's dream to be a boss because it looks good on the CV or something? And um, so when you, when, when you actually realize that this might be something that you're doing, you're living someone else's dream, then you stop, yeah? And then what do you do? You start asking yourself this question, who am I? Who am I? I don't know who I, who I am anymore. And it's a horrible question. You know, this guy, I put this um, CD cover here, Beanie Man. Um, I, I don't know if any of you know that song, but I, I love it. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> there's this guy, he obviously doesn't know, he hasn't got a clue who he is. So yeah, I think it's a, it's a brilliant tune. So um, yeah, so this guy keeps asking like who, who, who he is and he's concerned about certainly not, not like actually his song, but something else. You should listen to it. Um, so yeah, there's, there, there are certain reasons why who am I is the, the, the worst possible uh, question you could ask yourself when you, are, when, when you are trying to work with your authenticity. So what, what is it? What is authenticity? One description is that um, when your real self, you, as your core, is displayed in all your different roles to different audiences at different times. That's one description. Um, because, as you probably know, we all have different roles. We, we have so many. This is just a, just, just a few that I'm mentioning here. You know, you, you could be a mom or dad, boss, wife, lover, colleague, friend, part-time poet, clubber, part-time tennis player, whatever it is that you want to do and, and, and you're doing. And many people always say like, they start asking questions like, okay, who am I? 
But then you realized you can't really answer that question because you're so many people in one. You're also this and you're also that, but you're also this. So who is the real you? And this is why it's a horrible question because how would you know? No one can answer that question. But it's very comforting to know that you can be your authentic self in more than one role. It's not just that you're, you're an authentic mom, but not an authentic boss. But you can be in all of your roles. You can be your authentic self. So instead of asking yourself if this is something you want to work with, um, you want to be more authentic, it's not to ask, who am I? Because remember, it's a crap question. You shouldn't be going there. <laughs> it's just a, uh, what I call a mind fuck <laughs> if you go to that question. Better questions are, what drives me? What gives me energy? And what drains me? Especially these two ones are very important. You know, when I was going through that thing um, a couple of years ago, um, when I was like, I don't, I don't know, you know, what am I good at? Is there anything that I enjoy in my work? I don't know. Um, all of a sudden I realized that these are the, bet the better questions I should be asking myself. You know, what in my job or in everything that I've done so far, what gives me energy? What drains, drains me? You know, when I do something, um, when do I feel like I'm so knackered afterwards that I can't even breathe, I'm so tired. So I started writing things down. This gives me energy. After when, I, when I've done this, I'm completely knackered. So then I started finding, you know, certain clues for myself. Okay, sure. Yes, I do love this, but I don't like that so much. I'm very good at this, but not so good at that. And that pointed me to the right direction to, to find uh, my, authentic, my, my authentic self and what I should be doing with my life. And more descriptions, uh, what is authenticity? Uh, one very important one is that your actions should match your words. Meaning, uh, let's say you, you are a boss and you keep saying to your employees that my priority is my people. You, my employees, are my priority. I do everything for you. But then, you don't turn up in meetings. Um, you cancel at the very last minute uh, your meetings with, with, with those people you're supposed to be caring about. Um, that is a clear indication that your actions don't match your words. So this is being inauthentic. You're saying one thing, but you're not doing it. And another one is that when you have a clear sense of what drives you, and where you, come, where you come from. And this is what I call your story. And when I started this presentation, I said, um, <clears throat> if, if you can notice, there was this um, couple of sentences or one sentence there saying that um, uh, authentic story is never just about your wins, but it's also about your fails. So this is the key um, in the second bit. You have to accept your whole story. And this is what I, I, I call it, own, owning your own shit. <laughs> so you shouldn't just include big wins in your story. Uh, you have to include those epic fails as well. You know those ones that I, I told you about it, uh, as well. I have many more, but we don't have time for those. <laughs> but I do have quite, quite a few, and I do include them in my story. Uh, and I, I can pick those. If you've ever listened to Essie the Miss Clinic a podcast, I do share them quite openly, because I think those are very unique to me. And it took me years to realize that actually these fails um, are very good. They make me stronger. And they also make really interesting stories because who would like to hear about the perfect person ever? Well, you know, it's boring. So, you know, when, you, when you're working with your authenticity, try to find those stories that you kind of cringe at. <laughs> you're like, I don't want to tell that. I don't want to use that. And those are exactly the ones that you should be going to when you're trying to uh, work with your, you know, your authenticity. And also, um, this is where many leaders stop. 
we're also talking about leadership today. So most leaders, they, they all, only want to show us their, their good points, their, their, their strengths and, and where they're great at. But not many leaders have the courage and confidence to share those bits where they are not succeeding, where they are not so comfortable and where they might even have to say sorry. Not many leaders know how to say sorry. So don't be that person. Brene Brown, um, she's written a lot about authenticity and, and vulnerability. And I think this quote is really good. <clears throat> to be authentic, we must cultivate the courage to be imperfect and vulnerable. We have to believe that we are fundamentally worthy of love and acceptance, just as we are. And this goes for leaders, especially. And many leaders think that being vulnerable is actually being weak. And it's not true. And um, you should read, if you're, if you're interested in this, uh, read Brene Brown, because she, she has a really nice way of um, um, writing about this. And I think it's, uh, those are very good lesson, lessons for, for all of us who lead. And one very, very good reason to be um, going for your uh, and uh, fulfilling uh, or, or filling your story with those weaknesses as well and uh, your fails is that um, you can't really create authentic connections with people if you only highlight the good bits. When you genuinely want to have authentic connection with people, you have to show imperfection. Because we know this, no one is perfect, right? So why do we, in our different roles, all of a sudden have this urge to portray ourselves as being perfect? That's just stupid. Nobody's perfect. Um, and if we want to connect with people, we don't want to be just like, hey, everything's great. Everything's perfect. Ah, oh, yeah, every day is sun is shining. That's not authentic you must be able to say, hey, you know what? I feel that this is not really going so great. I think we need to make a change. Um, how do you feel? Do you feel the same way? And that's how you connect. Not by being, hey, you know, perfect, but being imperfect. And, um, you know, we have this, this, this also, um, what would I call it? You know, when we sense that something is a bit off, you know, <laughs> uh, if someone is too perfect, we have this sensor in our heads that goes bling, 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 bling. Something's a bit off. That's too perfect. We don't want to see people who are too perfect because those are robots. So we want to communicate and we want to be, um, we, we, want, we, we want to have connection with people who are like us, who are imperfect. So it's weird why so many leaders go for perfection when they would achieve so much more by being authentic and being imperfect. So another big question, why does authenticity win? What's happening at the moment, and we know this, um, we don't have to talk about the pandemic and so much because we know it's happening and, and we don't need to go there that much. But um, what tends to happen um, in crisis is that people turn to authenticity and real and and since we, we've been in crisis for a few months now and, and we don't know when this ends um, what's already happening is that we do this again we have a big need for human connection we have we want to have real connections with people um, we want to buy local food and we want to support local um, businesses and entrepreneurs um, we, we are going for that thing again authenticity and real and this is not the first time um, if we look at economic downturn 2008 what happened after that um, well um, we're talking about trust in a minute but um, trust changed hugely and um, and, and we, we people became more cynical about you know how how brands are saying one thing and then doing one thing 
And this is this is the, the prime example of, of being inauthentic is saying something and not doing it. And 2008, when when things crashed, we started going for that kind of real realness again. Where do I find something real? And um, if you remember buying local, you know, support your local um, farmers markets, all those things, they kicked off properly after the economic crisis. And simultaneously, McDonald's has seen hugely declining sales and it's still declining. So um, it's no coincidence that um, during crisis, we turn to something that we feel that is more authentic. Yeah, so our tendency to choose authenticity in turbulent times is also affecting us now. And this is um, one interesting study I found uh, called Icentious Leadership Index 2019. Um, and here's a quote from that study. Leaders who fall short of the necessary soft skills such as authenticity, empathy, and trust are the ones who fail to keep their head above water when faced with crisis. So if you think about this, then those leaders who are compassionate and who show up when the going gets tough are the ones who are able to turn things around in the end during crisis. And let's look at a couple of cases where <clears throat> I think this, this is very visible. And glass of water. <laughs> Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. This is not so much about the case. Um, quite, I, I, I would assume most of us, uh, most of us know that this, this case was about data breach. And uh, so we don't have to talk about this case, but we're more talking about um, how people reacts in situations like this. And Mark Zuckerberg, the CEO of, of Facebook, was seen to be ineffective and dishonest. Um, it took him five days to come out of his bunker <laughs> and, and, and address this issue. And if it takes you five days as a leader in a crisis to come out, then it's not really good, is it? <laughs> So that's why if you look at the media clippings and you look at studies and, 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 uh, um, and so on about this case, then you realize that most of the clippings are very negative. The, the media perceive this, he, him, him coming out uh, after five days, um, being obviously not good leadership. But also uh, what happened, happened afterwards is that um, his actions and his words didn't match. And remember, that's, that's one, uh, one, one key in authenticity. You have to match your words and your actions. But in Mark Zuckerberg's case, um, he didn't do that. He was promising that Facebook will do uh, alterations and will change the settings and will make sure that the, 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 the privacy is not compromised. But it took them a very, very long time to make any improvements. And some of the improvements are still not done. So uh, this is a sign of inauthenticity. And here's another example, but from the complete, the other end of the, the other spectrum, is the New Zealand Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern. Um, after uh, the Christchurch mosque bombings, um, she was very quick to react. Um, she declared a day of mourning. Um, she changed gun laws in New Zealand. Um, and she has been praised for her empathy and authenticity. And she turned up in, uh, in, in wearing hijab, as, as you can see. And, and she was also praised for her communication skills, her leadership skills, that she took a very, very difficult situation and addressed people um, by standing next to them, with them, not above them. So, and this quote is, is, is from The Atlantic saying exactly that, that she doesn't preach, 
at her people, but she's standing with them. And, um, and Jacinda is a very good example of a modern leader anyways, because she's, uh, um, you know, she's, uh, if, if you've ever followed her and, and you know her style, you know, she, she has a young family and she brings <clears throat> her family to her social media postings and, and she has a Facebook Live um, where she shares um, information, you know, addresses the whole nation, but also she shares things that are important to her and what she's doing currently and she she might have you know currently she's nursing her baby or something and then then she has to pop out and, and do something else and, and she's very authentic so the main reason to gain came, to gain this competitive edge sorry i'm losing my voice <laughs> it's allergy or something uh, the main reason to gain this competitive edge call or authenticity is that authenticity builds trust and no leader will be able to handle a crisis if they have lost people's trust so if you look at for example the facebook scenario and you look at uh, new zealand uh, you look at uh, how mark zuckerberg reacted and how uh, jacinda arden uh, have reacted then you, you can see this 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 so clearly um, who has people's trust certainly not mark zuckerberg as much as 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 new zealand prime minister and these are the building blocks of um, um uh, trust um and authenticity and confidence because these are these kind of coexist and you can't have one without the other so let me explain Let's go further. Um, what's happening at the moment, this is very uh, recent statistic um, uh, in, in done during this pandemic. Um, in the past, our studies found that 44% 44, 44 of companies in the past um, said, you know, we don't really like, you know, remote working. Uh, but now we are in a situation where, where pretty much every company has to do it. And that's a huge shift. And it requires new skills from us as well. But also, uh, importantly, it, uh, it requires a greater level of trust from people who lead and, and how they build relationships. So I won't even say this. But the biggest change we are facing is not about technology. We often say that techno technology, AI, digital are the biggest uh, changes in our, in, our, in our current history. Uh, they, they are changing our lives more than, more than anything. But actually, um, alongside of that, the big change is about trust and how we trust people. Trust has changed radically. And and it will most likely change again after the pandemic. And we are not completely sure yet which way where it's going to go. We, we have scenarios and we have certain ideas, but this will certainly be something that is interesting to follow, how trust will change. Being transparent with the truth. And if you're quick to get in front of people, and you do it regularly. And if you demonstrate authentic empathy, then those are the skills that are um, asked from our leaders right now. And this is based on Adam and Trust Report 2020. Um, <clears throat> and trust is something that um, is very uh, essential when you think about authenticity. Um, trust rates, we usually, uh, if we look at trust, who do we trust? What kind of people do we trust? We quite often go to that left side. You know, it's someone who's competent, obviously, you have to be competent in your job, right? You don't trust someone who's a complete, like, you know, <laughs> hasn't got a clue what he's doing. So there has to be competence. There has to be reliability. If you say you're, you're going to do something, then you should do it. Um, you can't trust the person who says he, he's going to be there at three o'clock and he doesn't turn up at all. That's not very trustworthy. So those are the basic things. Those are the how you do things. 
But importantly, at the moment, and this, this, this is the new bit, is that um, leaders also have to consider, consider why you do things. Before, it was more just those two were kind of enough. You had a good title. You must be reliable. You must be competent. That was enough. But today, it's not enough. You need to know why you do things and, and how they are um, portrayed in the way you behave. So integri integrity and empathy are the key skills. And you could, you could even say that integrity, integrity is authenticity. And then you have empathy. And especially in a crisis, leaders also need confidence. I said that you need those three things. Those are, those are essential. Um, trust, confidence, and authenticity. Because without one, you don't really have the other. And what is confidence, by the way? People quite often ask me this. What is confidence? Um, it's, it's your trust in your ability, that you trust your ability to solve whatever comes your way, that you know you have a chance of winning. <laughs> you, you know that you can do something, you can, you can do it well, that's confidence. Um, you asked to, you know, host, host a webinar. <laughs> you asked to host a webinar. <laughs> and then you, that's confidence when you can say, yeah, I can do it really well. And I can, I'm, I'm sure I can, I have a chance of winning. I have a chance of succeeding. And that's the, that's the kind of confidence. Um, you believe you can succeed. That's confidence. Okay, so here they are. The, the, the holy trinity, so to speak. <laughs> Authenticity, self-confidence, and trust. Without authenticity and confidence, it's hard to build trust. So that's why leaders have to work um, to have these skills as well in themselves. So what happens after the pandemic? When it comes to leadership, we know this. It's certainly leadership and your success as a leader uh, is not based on titles anymore. It hasn't been for a while now anyways, but, um, but certainly um, as, as you remember, hopefully you remember that uh, during crisis, we go for authenticity and we go for real. So you can't buy trust. You can't buy authenticity. You can't buy confidence by just saying that, hey, I'm the boss or I have this title or these are my past merits and now you should, you know, you should consider me the, the you know, the, the king <laughs> because I have these past merits. It doesn't work like that. Um, in post-pandemic era, uh, successful leadership is based on how authentic we are, how confident we are as communicators and how well we build and share trust. Um, and one uh, very signific significant thing about authenticity is that um, people who are authentic tend to be great communicators. Um, because then you have, uh, when you are authentic, when you have found your, 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 your you're very comfortable with your whole story with your weaknesses and with your, with your strengths and, and with those epic fails and with those good bits as well, you tend to be able to communicate more openly. Um, you don't have to hold back so much. You don't have to watch your words all the time. Can I say this? Can I say that? Can I raise my hand? Can I? No. Because you, when you're an authentic leader, then by default, you're a great communicator. These go hand in hand. And it's very interesting that uh, when, when we talk about communication, um, you can't really afford to be a bad communicator in this day and age. Um, if you look at these numbers, uh, bad communication costs money. 
So as a leader, you should be interested in this, you know, um, what happens if I'm not communicating properly? If, what happens if I'm not, uh, if my people don't trust me and don't trust what I say and what I do and they don't think I'm authentic? That actually costs money. Um, if you look at these numbers, if you have up to 100 people in your company that costs 420,000 US dollars a year, and if you have a massive big company, then look at that number. That's like 62.4 million per company per year. So um, you shouldn't really <laughs> afford to be, you can't afford to be a bad communicator. Uh, and this is from a book called The Cost of Poor Communications. And you can have a look at that as well if you want to. But what is the catalyst to success then? Well, um, this is very recent as well. It's from Deloitte. Um, leaders should now seize the opportunity. No, this is very recent. This is, this, this is about this, this pandemic uh, era. Uh, leaders should seize the opportunity to energize their teams by imagining a successful future and embracing trust as the catalyst to get there. And if you are embracing trust, then remember what you need to have. You need to have authenticity, you need to be a good communicator and you need to have confidence. You have to be a confident communicator and authentic communicator, let's put it that way. And trust is the glue of life. It's the most essential ingredient in effective communication. It's the foundational principle that holds all relationships. I, I, all relationships. I really like this quote and that's why I put it here. And then there's this, is, I, I like that picture as well, it's quite nice. <laughs> um, so uh, very many reasons now um, uh, to, to be starting with, with yourself and well, as well and, and, and try to think about your authenticity and your journey in that, where, where you are uh, with regards to authenticity in your life and in your leadership. So yes, then let's go to the next one, which is how to be more authentic. Ta-da! <laughs> if it's really up to you, <laughs> and no, no one else can do this for you, it's something that you have to work with by yourself and, 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 and really go, go deep and um, think about yourself. Uh, you can choose who you want to be at work. That's it really, really that simple. And you can decide how you want to come across. Do I want to come across as authentic? And or do I want to hide? Do I want to share and be transparent? Or do, you want to, do I want to build walls around me? Do I want to be a fantastic colleague? Do I want to ask people how they are feeling? Or do I just want to, you know, do my own thing and not care about anyone else. That's all you. That's really up to you what you want to do. Um, so you should really consider um, bringing your whole self with you to work and to your leadership role. Because when you bring your full expression of yourself, of who you are, uh, in your, all these different roles, remember all these, they all make you, they, they are all you. Um, when you bring all of that, the whole expression, expression of all these bits that make up you, then you will, see, you will be seen by others as self-confidence. It's really weird, isn't it, in a way? Um, you would think that if I show myself fully, you know, the way I am, um, you know, me being like this and laughing a lot and, and, uh, <laughs> and uh, um, being a bit loud and so on. Would people like me? Uh, would they think that I'm not trustworthy if, you know, if, if I bring my whole, whole me to work? And it's, it's, it's completely the opposite. Um, when you are who you are authentically, people tend to trust you more. It's really weird. <laughs> so you have to start working with that. And remember this, confidence is a skill. It's not a trait. Um, when you were born, you had this ultimate confidence. You, you, had, you were so confident. You know, um, you knew, yeah, I can walk. You couldn't really walk, but you felt like, yeah, I can walk. I can ride this bike. I can do anything. I can be an astronaut. I can do, you know, I can conquer the world. Basically, that's your confidence. 
So you, yeah, you, you're kind of born with it. But then world happens. <laughs> then shit happens. Love happens. Um, unemployment happens. All those kinds of things happen. And they kind of erode your confidence all the time. But because it's there, you, you, can, you can still be confident afterwards, but you have to work at it. You have to train yourself to be more confident. So it's like anything else. It's like communication skills. It's like performing, playing piano. Those are all skills that you need to practice. And confidence is exactly the same. And it's, it's, very, it's, it's very comforting. I like this slide because I think, you know, sometimes when, when I'm not feeling confident, like before this uh, webinar, for example, um, I'm losing my voice and, and uh, busy day and everything. <laughs> I wasn't very confident. And then I went through my slides and I was like, yeah, but this is a, this is a, it's a skill and I get to practice. I get to practice this skill of confidence again. And now I'm feeling pretty great, great because I, you know, I managed to do this and I'm really you know, patting myself on the back and it's like, great. So yeah, you can do that too. And just put yourself to those situations that are not feeling so comfortable and, and you know that you're gonna be a bit scared. And those are the, the lessons that you need to learn and then, then you kind of grow and then you grow your confidence as well while you do those things. So I'm really proud of myself that I did this, yay. <laughs> So I like to, um, I always like to summarize uh, because um, I'm a very simple person and I, I like to see things on one slide. This is far too many slides for my taste. <laughs> now I usually tend to, you know, I like to have just a few slides. Um, but yeah, so there's uh, one slide, uh, one, one slide that pretty much covers it all. Uh, so how to be more authentic? First of all, dare to be honest and empathetic. That's quite self-explanatory, isn't it? Uh, being honest doesn't mean that you have to be rude. Um, it means that when you, when you are open and when you are honest, uh, then you can also be wise <laughs> and use your wisdom. Uh, especially in this situation when people are going through crisis, we never know what's happening. You know, someone might have lost their job, someone might have lost um, a family member to the virus. Uh, you have to be empathetic. So being honest and uh, honest doesn't mean that you have to be rude. Uh, you have to be considerate um, and uh, don't be cruel. And the second one is don't be a victim. And then this means that we are very capable of victimizing ourselves um, also as leaders. Um, there could be a situation at work where, mm, and I'm sure quite a few of you have had this, and I certainly have, um, when you're at work and you feel like people are not really seeing what I'm capable of. Um, they don't see, really see that I'm really good at this. And then you start carrying this feeling around that people just don't see how good you are. And that's when you're kind of victimizing yourself. Um, um, you're very sad and hurt uh, because other people don't see you the way you would like them to see you. And, uh, and, and, and then when, when you start suppressing these emotions, you start building walls. You know, I'm sad and hurt. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to discuss it. You start building, building walls. Um, and then you numb yourself. You kind of, you, you distance yourself. And that's not good. And this is called victim mindset. And you are actually starting to undermine your self-confidence yourself. It's not anyone else who's doing it. It's you who's <laughs> undermining yourself constantly. Um, so a key to authenticity is actually feeling what you're feeling and, uh, and accepting all these emotions and realizing that um, I might be doing this. I might be blaming others for the things that I'm feeling, whereas I don't really even know what they're thinking. We don't know for sure. Uh, so you're victimizing yourself for nothing. Uh, so then you, you must start realizing at this point, if you feel that you're the victim, uh, what do I love doing? What, what, what is it that I actually love? Well, I love my teams. I love my colleagues. It's great to have a chat with them at the coffee machine every morning. Uh, I love this and this person. And, uh, and also I'm actually playful. I'm playful when I'm around my kids and maybe I should be more playful at, 
at work as well. Why don't I bring that me <laughs> to work? And then you start building on that, you know, bring that person who's playful, bring that person who loves having a chat at the coffee machine, bring that person to work. And then you start realizing that people start, you know, seeing you, you as being confident as well and, and being good at those things that you want to be seen good at. So yeah, so that's the victim part. And also share your passions and your mission. What drives you? So don't ask, who am I? <laughs> but what drives, drives you and share that. And don't just stop there. Remember this, own your shit. Meaning, don't just go for the big wins. Don't just go for, hey, I'm, I'm this amazing person and I have all this massive experience and I've, I've won these awards and, and so on. I know in, in our industry, we go for the awards and we all, we always mention those, you know, how many, uh, how many golden drums you won <laughs> and so on. So it's not about that. Uh, it's great that you have them, you know, good for you. But, you know, owning your shit is also owning those 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 parts when you failed, when you didn't win anything, when you, when you thought you did a great job. And, and also stand with your people, not above them. When the going gets tough, be there for them, be next to them. Don't order and, and don't, don't push your agenda from above them, but be there genuinely, be with them. Ask them how they're doing. And then the last thing, the best way to be perceived, <laughs> The best way to be perceived as authentic is to be authentic. It's very simple, sounds simple, but we know it's not so. Um, um, if you want to be perceived as authentic, then be it. And this means that you have to have some other purpose for doing things than, you know, if you're a business owner, um, um, than, than making money and, and when we know this there's, there's a lot, lot of talk about purpose and, and, and so on but, um, but it's very important for you personally as well it's not about brand purpose and company purpose but also what's your purpose uh, build a purpose for yourself my purpose is to help others not to do the same I did <laughs> you know <laughs> take the easier route learn to communicate better, <laughs> be confident, you know, that's my pur purpose, I want to help people. So you have to think about your purpose, what is yours? And I created this, <laughs> I have to say, I always quote other people, but I quote myself now. <laughs> okay, authenticity can't be learned from books, it's about doing things your own way. Your weaknesses and strengths, epic fails and wins, they make you unique. So don't be ashamed of being different and following your own path. That makes you truly authentic. And I want to stop here now. Um, I didn't know how else to put it, so I put it on this slide. And I think this, is pr this pretty much uh, sums it up. My, my story from the beginning, I told you about my, my fails and, and, and my burnouts and so on. And then ties it all the way back to the end and all this authenticity and I, how I <clears throat> perceive uh, my authenticity and uh, how I learn to be more authentic. So that's it. I'd love to hear from you <laughs> next. So let me stop sharing um, from here, I think. Yes. And I can see people. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I can't see you, but I can see uh, names. Very nice to see you. Do you have any questions for me? Anyone who want to ask anything and, and, and use the chat function, if you can see it, send a question. I can't see any at the moment. Um, but if you don't have any questions for me, I have a question for you. Um, thanks, it was a good session. Thank you, <laughs> you too. It was great to see you here. Um, I have a question for you actually. Um, so, um, how would you see leadership changing after this pandemic? What do you think? when it comes to authenticity or trust or confidence, um, how do you see leadership changing? And second question is that, how will you change? 
how will you change as a leader, as a person, as a colleague um, after the pandemic? What kind of person will you bring to work? I'm going to unmute you and see if, if I can have a more natural chat with you people. <laughs> Let me just see if I can do that. Uh, I close that for now. Hang on a sec. Okay. Uh, and then that kind of, this always happens. Um, I can't see the um, unmute all now and I did see it just before this session started. Uh, okay. So I can't get it to work. So if you have questions, there's someone. Um, okay, great. Um, changes, changes already started with ourselves and not others. We can realize only own changes and then can take a look around and understand. This is from Aikut. Uh, thanks for your comment. It's exactly <clears throat> like that. Uh, any more questions or comments? Any more you want to know about? Uh, I'm really interested in seeing how this uh, unmute thing happens because at the moment it's not, I can't see it. Um, which is weird. Okay, hang on. Um, participants here. And then if I go allow to talk, uh, allow to talk, allow to talk, I'm just allowing you all to talk. So I say hello. <laughs> I have to do it this way. Hello. Say hello. Hello. Hey, hello. brilliant. Hey. Nice to hear some human voices. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This was so horrible. I love talking to people and it's like, hey, let's have a moment. <laughs> By the way, thank you for sharing your such lovely smiling. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, thanks for your comments. It's very nice to hear from you. <laughs> okay. It was great. It was, it, it was great uh, webinar. Uh, yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. This and hopefully things will be better but the most of change uh, will be start by ourselves to my mind exactly so if we concentrate the what's happening in the in the in the world mm -hmm. well, we can it, it's it's like a trick to my mind yeah yeah <laughs> uh, and um, if we can focus our skills and are changing uh, because uh, many things start uh, inside to me and that's all mm -hmm. it's true if you want to change I, I think this is the, the the old wisdom is that if you want to change the world around this change yourself first mm -hmm. because you can't really change anyone else <laughs> unfortunately so change yourself and then people's reactions to you will change as well very true. Good comment. Thanks. And I or have another one. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Or any other? Or, or any other? Mm -hmm. Who will talking and after me? Yeah. Was there someone else who wanted to say something? And raise your hand or say something, you know, <laughs> do a little, give, give, a, give a note or something if, if, if you can't speak, if you wanted to. Um, but it was really nice uh, seeing you. So, so many people here. It's a very interesting topic. And I will write um, the same things uh, to, to, um, to, to put it in a, in a concise form um, and maybe even give this presentation and, and, and have it to be shared so you can have it for yourself and you can go back to the notes and, and so on. So, because uh, I, I didn't want it to be just one way street. I, I want you to have something out of this and that's why I want it to be very concrete. So uh, I will give you a, a, a little, little summary of this as well and you can 
um, you can go and, and, and download it for yourselves as well. But imperfection is good. Yes, it is good. It is good. It's the, it's the key to being, being, uh, having authentic relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't want to see robots. <laughs> Anyone else? Nina, do you have any comments? Put you on the spot. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, well, I just wrote, I just wrote the chat, chat thing there. But, uh, I think, um, thank, well, anyways, thank you. It was nice listening to you. And um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of authenticity and I dislike uh, any kind of layers we, we use when meeting others and when communicating. So I'm, I, I really, I really um, like everything you said on the webinar. And I think as leaders and as people, I, I hope that uh, this weird uh, virus caused authenticity in, in meeting meetings with each other online and uh, as like uh, communicating from home and, and doing everything as part of our, our working from home and being more people than leaders or in, in different work modes or work roles. Mm -hmm. I hope it sticks and uh, when we actually get to meet each other at work then we'll uh, stay more as as who we are instead of being in uh, these different suits and and things although I'm, I'm looking forward to wearing uh, jeans instead of these yoga pants <laughs> but I have jeans <laughs> for oh. the first time in like forever <laughs> I don't <laughs> and the top not just like, you know, any random, you know, old something. <laughs> um, and, and that was actually a good, good point um, with regards to this virtual world where we are living at the moment. Uh, this is a question for all of you. Um, have you found yourself being uh, more authentic in your communication and how you present yourselves um, in this virtual environment or do you find yourself being more authentic and better in communicating authentically when you are present in real life? Um, what do you feel? How do you feel? This is very interesting. Because I started thinking, um, we've done loads of these in you know, Zoom meetings, or, or all of us have. Um, it's very nice to see people in there, not like, you know, wearing makeup and, and in their living rooms and have their cats <laughs> jump behind them. And, and you can even see like what books they are reading if they are sitting in front of their bookshelves. Uh, and I know I was thinking maybe this is, uh, this is start, uh, a beginning of something new. You know, are presenting ourselves, like Nina said, uh, more authentically. When we're here, I'm in my, my, my son's room. Um, you know, it's certainly not a perfect, perfect place for, or, you know, this webinar, but it's authentic. <laughs> so um, I'm thinking that th this is actually a good thing for us. We are, we are showing more of ourselves, our real selves, uh, when we are sitting in our homes. How, how do you feel? Anyone else feel the same? But I certainly hope, just like Nina said, I, I hope that this will carry on and uh, we can actually uh, be more of who we are when we return to our workplaces and, as well and we don't put on those shows that much. We can't afford to, as we've just seen. <laughs> we can't lead people in crisis or, or past this crisis if we are uh, putting on, on, on shows. We have to lead authentically. Mm. Great, and then we have a comment here. Um, <laughs> as Susie says, it is a little bit funky, although some Finns may say it is invasion of their privacy. <laughs> Very true, probably, yeah, probably. <laughs> And then uh, Sari is saying, I feel the Zooming culture is improving. People don't have to be all business tidy to turn on their camera anymore. Great. 
Oh, in exactly the same way. I love it. I love this comment because I, uh, you know, we don't have to be in our perfect attire and in our perfect makeup and we can see people behind this mask. I love it. It's great. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, there was Nina's comments as well. I hope that this COVID-19 course authenticity stays and we remember, we, we remember to be genuine in our communication and meetings. IRL and online and uh, in real life and online and I, I absolutely agree like we just discussed Okay guys anyone else Anyone else to say I had a really great session. Thank you so much for being here and listening and uh, Thank you for the great session Mario. Well, thank you <laughs> and uh, looking forward to hearing from you and, um, and I will put together um, a shorter version of this presentation. And uh, if you go to um, LinkedIn, uh, and uh, Lily is probably going to share it there, or I'll, I'll put a link to uh, the post there, and then, then you can download this material. Lovely. So thank you very, very much. Um, there was one more comment. What I like about nowadays meeting is that the fun factor is now on. I agree. Fun is always on for me. I love it. <laughs> and also, please fill the feedback form. There will be a feedback form uh, afterwards after this, uh, this webinar, which will finish in about a minute. <laughs> so uh, please fill it in and uh, let us know how we've done. Um, and here's also the link. Uh, if you look at the chat bit, then you can see the link there from TGT Live to all panelists and attendees. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Susie, for you, for you too. And, uh, and I would thank you for, for, um, for all, all of your, your questions and, and then you participated. It's great. Warms my heart. And remember to stay real and be authentic. Okay, thank you. See you later. Bye-bye.